Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the studio. Me and Shima, we are interviewing one of our speakers, Mark. Hi. Hi. And uh, the founder of Cossack, Mike. Hello, everybody. It's nice Great. to meet you. Nice, nice. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> well, uh, let's just, pretend. Uh, that was my automatic response. That's uh -huh. fine. You're meeting maybe the viewers or something. Of course. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, it's great to have you guys here. Uh, Mark, just, you just finished your talk. Are you happy with your talk? Yeah, I, um, I partially winged it, to be honest. So I did the slides, you know, this night. So I just did it like a few hours ago and then sent them. And your, your, um, like the agency doing all the like organization for, for the um, talks, they like reminded me two times that I need to send it now and I was like super stressed already but it worked out it was a very uh I would say natural talk because I did the talk a few times already I you know yeah I built Nitro so I yeah. I was I was watching it it was it was very nice oh, thank you I like it. the funny thing is that I think you are the third person saying that oh I didn't have slides so I did them oh, really? during the night yeah oh that's good. so I'm not sure why <laughs> but people tend to kind of ignore the fact that conference is approaching really yeah. fast so yeah but maybe it's not, maybe that's the way. It's just the way. It's it is. The way. I mean, normally I would be, I would call myself a very just-in-time person, but I would still have slides like three days before at least. But then I was, you know, no, a sign where like maybe one day was your one. Day, okay, yeah, one. How day. about you, Mike? Is that Every day before exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was so telling Mark yesterday when we had speakers dinner that um, the moment when I decided to change something about my life was when I went to Amsterdam for a conference and I didn't sleep at all. Okay. Uh, just because I had to finish the slides for the morning talk. And at that point, I realized I do have to shift uh, something. But thanks to, you know, AI, I can finally prepare with my just-in-time um, uh, um, approach as well. Because it's only like maybe a week ahead that I have my mind finally ready for the talk. So so you, you are kind of like similar. We just, we spoke a second before we came on air and Michael Mark said that they are very similar people. Can't you see the similarities? Like, <laughs> even the glasses. Are, but... Yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, but I think you had a question about uh, uh, something else, right? Um, well, I have many questions, to be honest. Um, and going back to doing presentations on time, maybe that's why your module system is called Nitro, because you need a Nitro before yes. the presentation to finish it up so we can go out and present it. The Nitro would be coffee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one would be caffeine, for example. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not sure if you know this, but... His, okay, so his library is called Nitro, right? Yep. Which also has a very good uh, correlation with the Nitro again injection system in cars. That's why the library you happen to be working on is called Harness. And we know Harness as well, right? Oh, harness, yeah. So we're playing in the same vocabulary here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it, it was all planned all together. It's all Or I even uh, came up with, uh, with the idea, right? Yeah, it's all planned. It's like a five year plan in the future. So we already know what's going to happen. And when we have it in your brain. Yeah, it's it. injecting your brain very, yeah. So I'm living in the Matrix. Okay. Yeah. And Inception. So it's, and it's makes, yeah, it's all at the same time. That would be a tough time. movie to watch. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> it's real life. It's not a movie. But, okay, going back to React Native. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe let's focus. For a minute, okay. React Native, okay. and talk about Nitro. So I guess you told already uh, why Nitro was needed, mm -hmm. what problems does it solve. Um, but for example, do you see Nitro as an alternative or maybe a better alternative? You know, something that at some point mm -hmm. in the future will replace, for example, Turbo modules. Yeah. So I just talked to um, what was it here about from Expo about this, um, and I think there's. Especially when Nitro first came out, it was a common misconception that Nitro is this like alternative to turbo modules, which I just did not upstream, but it's just turbo modules, but faster. And I just wanted to create my own thing, which is not the case. Um, I'm obviously a big fan of open source. I love upstreaming things that should go to main um, and, and keeping them there where they belong. But Nitro is um, like... As its foundation, it's completely different than the approach from turbo modules. So we have some very technical differences, like um, it doesn't use Objective-C, it goes through the Swift interrupt directly, um, it uses the C++ base at its core, you can write C++ modules even, which in turbo modules is with code gen a bit harder to do, it's still possible, but for example with yeah. expo modules it's not possible. Um, and the, the code generator generates static C++ template bindings, which are also a bit better in my opinion, more type safe. Uh, and, and there's many of those like technical differences which make it fun fundamentally different. So I see it as an alternative. Maybe it helps for uh, the viewers to kind of 
categorize it a bit better. It's um, not an alternative to JSI. It all it lives in the same layer as Turbo modules, Expo modules, and Nitro modules. They are all nowadays based on JSI. Um, so it's also not an alternative to Node API because Node API would be more on the JSI yeah. layer. But it's this one is an abstraction on top. Um, and then. In terms of alternative, to finally get a full answer to the question, um, it's um, so you can use Nitro modules in an Expo app. You can use it with Turbo modules alongside, but Nitro modules allows you to build some things that are not possible with Turbo or Expo. So mm-hmm. I would say yes, it's an alternative if you need to build something that is just not possible in Expo or Turbo modules. If you have performance critical code, it makes sense because it's faster um, at method calls and everything. But you wouldn't you wouldn't say it's a go to. Module module system slash module thing. Well, <laughs> you've done your own module. It's it's hard to recommend something to everyone, uh, but at the same time, I'm using it for everything I build. So obviously, I know my way around Nitro. <laughs> so I built even the simplest library in Nitro modules um, because I just know if I build this in Nitro, it's super flexible. It's going to work. It's going to be fast. It's going to be stable. It's going to be uh, reusable. That's also one core thing of Nitro. Like, if I build an image component in Nitro, I can reuse it in another Nitro library, yeah. even from C++, even if it's written in Swift, in Kotlin, whatever. So reusability, performance, and so on, it's, that's why I choose Nitro for every module I build. Um, but then again, everybody can choose on their own. I don't want to recommend one thing over the other. I pers- personally always choose Nitro. So sticking to React Native world, that may be going a bit higher. We are celebrating 10 years of React Native. We're still not on V1. So I'm, and you are saying very similar people. So I wonder if you have the same opinion if we will have V1 before React Native turns 15. I already know the answer to this question, uh, but I cannot, I cannot say, uh, okay. you know, it's heavily in the A uh, base. I mean, uh, it is, it is a subject that is being heavily discussed, but okay. I think, um, you know, there is. But it's a meme. No, is that it's? Is that a real? Thing? I thought it was a meme. Yeah, it's. it's uh, maybe if it was a meme, then it's. Uh, I should have. I should have answered this way. But I think you know one thing worth calling out is that there is few more things uh, that come with the stable V1 release, and that is you know things such as um, expectation uh, for the meta and community to provide certain level of governance, certain level of support uh, for the public API to remain uh, stable in a certain way. And there is a few KPIs that internally at Meta and internally inside the community we are aware of. Um, and I think that question will become less of a meme and more of a serious question as soon as we met, meet those KPIs, which is going to take some time. Okay. Um, some of the things are around stable ABI as well, pre-compiled uh, uh, builds as well. So there is a lot of things that ha- must happen. We know them and that's the focus. And then once we meet them, the, the the V1 will be an obvious um, answer um, and something that will hopefully happen just naturally. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So there there is a clear path forward and we just need to walk the steps. Yeah, I mean, it. luckily, it doesn't seem to be that much of a deal breaker for big companies adopting mm-hmm. React Native, which is great. Uh, but again, um, like I said, the V1 uh, comes with some other uh, prerequisites that mm-hmm. will have also a very nice impact. Yeah, and we as as a community, we need to work together towards the future, towards the 1.0, yeah. providing feedback uh, to Meta, for example, yeah. to changes proposed by Meta itself, but also by proposing our own changes to make React Native great again. Yeah, I mean, like even the Nitro modules, because I've been uh, like, I remember before Mark uh, open sourced it, I I tried it for one project, or just right after you open sourced it. There's like a lot of a lot of small DX improvements that Mark has inside Nitro modules and, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, like, it's also a question whether that should be the default and how should we build modules going forward. So it, it, these are the things we need to figure out. Uh, and you yourself are doing quite a lot for DX, for React Native devs, right? Because you're building all the AI tooling yeah. and there's a lot of stuff. DX. <laughs> I, I, I feel like through my career, I've been only building CLIs and linking systems. Um, and yes, for example, the AI uh, module that I that I'm building, um, it's the API that we're using on iOS is Swift based. It's one of the first APIs that Apple didn't create with Objective C. If I use the initial modules, that would be much better. I would love to talk with you more about everything, but we need to wrap up. It was great talking with you guys. Yeah, Thank you. I'll see you around. Yeah, see you around. Thank, Thank you so much.